love bugs, it's time for Hotel avec Madame. Today, I'm actually going to be reading a book in English that is called Princess Pigsty. So, you guys don't actually know this about me, but one of my favorite authors is someone called Cornelia Funk. So, for people like Amelia who have read Inkheart, you will know that this is the same author who did it, but she writes a lot of young adult books and a lot of story books. And her books are really amazing. So if you guys need a summer read or you need something else to read and you want to borrow something, I have the entire Ink Heart series and I highly recommend it by Cornelia Funk. But for today, I thought that this would be an awesome book to read before your long weekend. I also know that we have now officially hit two months of school at home via online and that you guys are probably going a little bit crazy. And I just want to remind you, be the amazing humans that I know that you are, help your parents out and be kind to them because they are doing the best that they can in this situation too. So we are going to read this book. It is a little bit of a longer one, so just stick with me. I will try my best to not make it boring. Not that stories ever are. And we're going to get started. Drusilla, Rosalinda, and Isabella were real princesses. Their beautiful clothes filled 30 walking closets. They had footmen to blow their noses for them and ladies in waiting to tidy up their rooms, hang up their clothes and polish their crowns until they shone. Every morning, three teachers taught them royal behavior, how to sit on a throne without fidgeting, how to curtsy without falling over, how to yawn with your mouth closed and how to smile for a whole hour without taking a break. Six footmen swept up the crumbs that fell from their plates, and six ladies-in-waiting made sure they didn't get the tiniest scratch while playing. Well, pardon, il y a beaucoup de soleil ici. The princesses didn't feed their ponies and pet monkeys. Oh, no. They had three stable hands to do that. They even had three servants whose job it was to carry three cushions around so that the royal behinds always had something soft to sit on. What more could a princess wish for? Our children must be the happiest children in the world, said their mother the queen every day. But Isabella, the youngest princess, wasn't happy. Not one bit. Every night she sat by the window, looked up at the sky and at the moon and sighed. Hmm. Pretty Isabella there. One morning, Isabella jumped out of bed and shouted in such a loud voice that the whole castle woke up. I am tired of being a princess. It is boring, boring, boring. Her older sisters looked up from their feather pillows in surprise. I want to get dirty, cried Isabella, bouncing around on the bed. I want to blow my own nose. I don't want to smile all the time. I want to make my own sandwiches. I don't want to have my hair curled ever again. I do not want to be a princess anymore. And with that, she took her crown and threw it out the window. Splash! It landed in the goldfish pond. There'll be trouble now, said Drusilla and rang her bell. The door flew open and in marched six servants. May we ready your highness for breakfast? Purred the head footman. Rosalinda and Drusilla sat down in front of their mirrors right away but Isabella scrammed quick as a flash under her bed. Your Highness, I, I beg you to come out from under there, cried the head footman. No, I don't want to be dressed. I don't want to have my hair curled. Yuckity, yuck, yuck. I can't stand it. I'll wash myself in the fish pond, Isabella called out. Yourself in the fish pond, cried the footman in horror. Goodness gracious! And the head footman immediately sent for the queen, king. Sorry.
Isabella! thundered the king in such a loud voice that his wig slipped out of place. Come out from under that bed immediately! No, I don't want to be a princess anymore. I'd rather starve down here, said Isabella. Pull her out, ordered the king, now quite angry. Isabella pinched and scratched and kicked, but it was no good. The footman pulled her out by her feet and dressed her in her princess's dress. You can see. Where's your crown? asked the king sternly. She threw it into the fish pond, said Rosalinda. I most certainly did. That thing gives me headaches. And you can't climb trees in this stupid dress. I want to wear pants. Princesses, don't climb trees, thundered the king. That's just it. Princesses don't do anything fun. Princesses don't even pick their noses. Princesses just stand around looking pretty. Yuck. No, I don't want to be a princess anymore. Fish your crown out of the pond this very minute said the king. I will not. I'm never going to put that crown on ever again, Isabella said back. The king stamped his foot. Take her to the kitchens. She shall wash every single dishes, clean pans, peel onions, and scrub the oven until she fetches her crown from the fish pond. So the footmen did. They took Isabella to the kitchens. And Isabella peeled potatoes, polished pans, plucked pheasants, and whipped the cream that her sisters liked to eat for breakfast. After three days, her father sent for her. Isabella, you stink of onions, he sighed. So what? Did you know that cream is made from milk? No, I didn't know that. Now, will you fetch your crown from the fish pond? No, what for? Isabella, off to the pigsty with you, cried the king, tearing both his wig and his crown from his head in rage. So the footman took Isabella to the pigsty. And Isabella helped feed the pigs and clean out the sty. The pigs nuzzled against her with their pink snouts, and Isabella scratched their bristly hides. After three days, her father sent for her again. Isabella, you look a mess, he groaned. She stinks too cried her sisters. Did you know that pigs eat potatoes? Asked Isabella, pulling a piece of straw out of her hair. And that they're incredibly smart animals? It's a shame to eat them. Isabella, for the last time, go fetch your crown from the fish pond, put on a pretty dress, and comb your hair. No, I will not, but I would like to help out some more in the pigsty. Ugh, then we don't want to share a room with her anymore, cried her sisters, holding their noses. I'd rather sleep on straw anyways. Isabella went and fetched her favorite doll and her blanket and settled down in the pigsty. When night came and the moon shone over the castle, the king crept out of his palace. He went to the fish pond and fished out his youngest daughter's crown. Then he went to find her in the pigsty. Oh, my little daughter. You are dirty and your hair feels like straw. But you look happy, he said and sat down next to her on the straw. Yes, Daddy, I'm happier than I've ever been before. Ever in my entire life. Well, good. Here's your crown. 
and you may do as you wish with it as long as you as long as you come back to the castle i miss you i suppose i can wear it now and again perhaps when i'm feeding the chickens or picking blackberries did you know that you can make jam out of blackberries said isabella No, I didn't, but none of these things surprise me. One of these days, I think you're going to have to show me how it's done. He gave his daughter a big fat kiss on her dirty cheek. She kissed him on his big fat nose, and then they walked back to the castle hand in hand. Isabella still sleeps in the pigsty quite a lot. She gave up her fancy clothes. She gave them all to the cook's daughter. And as for curly hair, Isabella... Never let anybody curl her hair ever again. And that was the book, end of the book of Princess Pigsty by Cornelia Funk. Now I hope that you guys all have an amazing long weekend. And remember, like I said before, be kind to your parents. Because just like this is hard on you, this is also hard on them. And they're doing the best that they can for themselves and for you in this time. So make sure you give them an extra big hug, extra hugs all weekend long. Okay? Well, I love you guys and have an awesome long weekend. Bye, Soupies.